This is a look at things you might want to know before you actually start playing. The um, If you go into the Operational Art of War folder, and I'll call it OPART from now on because that's a lot easier to say. If you go into the OPART folder, you'll see a, a Manuals folder. There are some things here that are advanced, uh, but the key commands, the hotkeys, you might want to print those out. They come in handy sometimes. I like using the keyboard a lot. There's also the Manual and PDF searchable format so you can look through that the manual was uh, kind of old it was printed uh, it was written years ago so some of the stuff has been superseded if you go back to this uh, original opart folder i got a lot of stuff in here that you probably won't have but you'll see these what's new documents and they, they give you updates on what's been changed so that's enough of that uh, also you can go to the matrix forums it's a good place to ask a question there's always people there uh, to answer your questions, you just have to scroll through all this to find it. There it is right there. Bookmark this page. You can ask all kind of stuff here. It comes in real handy. All right, let's take a look here. Now, the first thing I want to do is look at the game options. It's probably more than you need to know if you're just starting, but it should always be the first thing you do. And you look at these. These are the standard, standard settings that I use and um, command and control scenario variability it just means that the scenario may or may not end when it's supposed to so I never use that, I don't know why fog of war uh, is obvious, some of this stuff is kind of obvious fog of war, if you turn it off you see everything, if you turn it on then fog of war is working the environment is weather effects, active disengagement is something that it's uh, debated sometimes as to whether you should play with it on or off. Uh, to me, obviously, if it's on, that's the way things go. I mean, if you're trying to move away when you're in contact with an enemy unit, uh, it's a little bit more difficult. So I think for most scenarios, you leave it on. Sometimes, if you get into it, you may come across conversations where people discuss where it should be off. But uh, No Borders is a, is a graphics visual feature. And uh, if you turn it off, it shows a lot more. High supply is something that was designed for older scenarios from a long time ago, where uh, maybe there was a when supply parameters were changed in later versions, you might need to have that on. Uh, but that's really more than you need to know. Uh, new flanking rules is another thing that that was improved as time went on. So uh, you know it works better if you have it on. Advanced rules, there's a basic set of rules and an advanced set of rules. I don't know anybody that specifically, or I've never heard of anybody specifically designing a scenario for the basic rules. So probably everything works better with advanced rules on. It's just a little more complicated. And if you find it too complicated for yourself, then maybe turn the advanced rules off at the beginning. Uh, these two bottom ones, new turn order rules and new supply rules, uh, were new with 3.4 and 3.4 is what I'm using for this tutorial. Um, so they're both improvements and um, it would be nice if you knew when you opened the scenario if they were used or not in the design but that's not always the case. So generally I have them turned off unless the scenario specifically says that they were designed with one or both of those on. Um, now the second set here, uh, Air Staff Assistant uh, if you don't want to mess with any of your air units, you can turn that on and the computer will run it yourself. You won't have to worry about them. Uh, these, these here are uh, graphics displays. A uh, tooltip is something that pops up uh, depending on where your mouse is on the map. Um, standard, it, it comes uh, from the, uh, um, it comes set up differently than I have it here. I have it set up here so that they don't come on because I, I don't want to see them. But uh, if you leave the standard settings that come with the game, you'll see those tooltips. If you don't like them, then you can reference this to see what the settings could be. Moving selects next unit, I never use. I think that means if you move a unit and move it to its uh, extent, then it'll automatically go to the next unit. Detailed combat reports are something I'll get into in the, in the combat tutorial. Uh, show PO assist buttons. I'll get into that in the PO tutorial. Sit rep, sit, 
excuse me, sitrep log is something that prints out to a separate file if you really want to get into trying to figure out what goes on in combat. Uh, double click opens planner is for combat planning. I'll get into that in a combat tutorial. Uh, these graphics support PNG graphics. The game will come with uh, PNG graphics, which were new for uh, 3.4. Uh, prior to that, it used BMP graphics. Uh, I like the bitmap BMPs better, so I keep the PNGs off. Uh, if you get into it, you can switch back and forth between the two and see what you like. Uh, these movie features are basically for making after action reports. Uh, if you turn them on, you can use them for that type of thing. It slows the game down uh, in between turns though, so I keep them off. And these are uh, visual and, uh, and sound settings. Uh, the intelligence for the computer side, the programmed opponent, which is the PO. Um, if you're playing solitaire, you might want to tinker around with these two things. I always just have them set like that. Now your other buttons here, uh, this one's for the editor. I'll get into that in the editor tutorial. Uh, this one for playing PBM, this one for resuming a saved game. And you'll notice that the bottom of the screen shows you on the mouse over, and that's uh, throughout a lot of other parts of the game. Let's go here because we want to take a look at scenarios and pick a scenario to play. Click on this headquarters button, and it'll take you to all the different folders. There's hundreds of scenarios, and you have lots of different things to choose from. And I've got a couple extra ones in here that you don't have. Uh, but for each different genre or whatever you want to call it, there's a different folder and you pick, pick that folder, click OK, and it'll bring up all the scenarios that are in that folder. Each of them has a scenario briefing that has different information in it for you to read through if you like reading everything. You'll get some information as to the, the scope and the scale in most of these briefings. Uh, but there's there's no real defined way to figure out um, how complex or complicated these are. So the best thing to do is just to open them up if you have an interest, take a look. If it's not what you like, then you go on to something else. There's also uh, a site called Rugged Defense. It has a whole lot of scenarios. Some of them are included in the game, but a lot of them aren't. And there's tons of scenarios here too and tons of different categories. So you can look there too if you're looking for something specific. Also, some of the scenarios come with some extra documentation, which can be found here on this button. If there's a page there, that means there's something with it. And if you click on it, it'll open up a separate document that the designer put together to explain and talk about things. Some of them are quite extensive, as you can see. Other ones are fairly short and give you some information that you need to know. Let's go back to uh, where I was and take a look at the Barbarossa 41 scenario. Uh, you have uh, the different modes of play here. Hot seat, email, Axis computer versus the human player, or the Soviet's computer versus the human player. That's the one I'll pick. And depending on the speed of your computer, sometimes it takes a couple seconds. Some of the larger scenarios take a, a little bit longer. And this is recording at the same time, so it actually took longer too. Um, the first thing that'll pop up is a situation briefing. All of this is pretty self-explanatory when you look at it. Uh, this news summary will come up at the beginning of just about every turn in most scenarios. Some of the stuff is generated by the game engine to let you know something that's going on, but most of it are, is things that the designer has put in to let you know what's going on. So. Now I'm being told that the Germans catch the Soviets unprepared for war. Okay. Um, and you also saw a quick small box that said I had reinforcements. That's this button over here in the lower right corner of all these other buttons. I look at that one first because if you have new units coming in, this will tell you what they are and where they are. And if you click on one, it'll take you right there to it. All the rest of these buttons are pretty self-explanatory too. When you wave over them, you'll see at the bottom of the screen, it tells you what they are. You can go back to the scenario briefing from there. You can go back to 
the situation briefing, you can go back to the, the news box that we just looked at. So that'll give you a better idea of what's going on before you actually get started and we'll cover a lot of other things in some other tutorials.